too much at stake to do otherwise. With so many technologies that are emerging and converging to help us eliminate disease, address climate change, and transform scarcity into abundance across the globe, we have but one thing to do, the very thing we've assembled here to do, create the future. But what will it take to create the future, to rise up and meet the awesome challenge that lies before us? We might find our answer in the insights of President Kennedy, who commissioned the original moonshot that was realized 50 years ago with the Apollo 11 mission. He proposed going to the moon because it was hard and because that goal would serve to organize and measure the best of mankind's energies and skills, because that challenge was one that we were willing to accept, one that we were unwilling to postpone, and one we intended to win. Today, we must again commit ourselves to bold action and to taking on challenges and addressing goals that we are unwilling to postpone and that we intend to win, for the stakes are even higher. At Singularity University, we believe there's no problem that we can't solve when we empower incredible people to apply exponential technologies and innovative ways of thinking. What it takes is a community that shares this commitment to tackling the tough problems, to applying new ways of thinking, and to persevering in order to create positive change. That community is here, and we begin today, right now. Welcome to Singularity University's Global Summit. All right. Good afternoon. Welcome to Singularity University's Global Summit. My name is Will Wiseman. I have the great pleasure of getting to be your host for the next three days. So I'm here because like so many of you, I believe in my core that an abundant world is possible in the not too distant future. And I wanna do everything that I can do to help bring that to fruition. To me, that looks like a world where we feed everyone where we educate everyone, where we shelter everyone, a world where people feel safe and they feel they have a fair shot at living a good life, a world where there are mechanisms to help curb our deficiencies and overcome our most base impulses. The data says we're going in the right direction. Poverty is down and while bumpy, uh, democracy is up. Literacy rates are continuing to rise and child mortality is continuing to decrease. There continue to be sustained advances in education and increasing vaccination rates. We're making good progress, but there's still so much to be done, right? The gap between where we are and where we want to be and can be is still enormous. So how do we get there? I think it's through creating the future together. It's about us, about people. That's how we'll get there, and that's the only way we'll get there. We need to do this work together, right? It's more than any one person, organization, industry, or nation can do alone. But together, we can really move worlds. So over the th next three days, we're gonna share some ideas about how this can happen. And it starts by reimagining what the world can look like. How the combination of people, new ideas and evolving technologies can help create a more abundant future for this planet and all its inhabitants. We know that it won't be easy, right? And it won't be without risk, it won't be without missteps, and it won't be without pain but we don't have a choice, right? We have to move forward. Today, humans face one of the most exciting and most daunting challenges in our relatively short history. We must transition from a mindset where we frequently think primarily of ourselves to one where we realize we're part of a complex ecosystem where we must work together and in harmony with the natural world because only that is sustainable. What's exciting is that this new way of operating is increasingly feasible today, right? And with an activated and engaged populace, our politicians are gonna have no choice but to come along. So if we choose to fund a smaller military and improve the quality of education, 
if we choose to build less coal power plants and build more renewables, if we choose to invest more in infrastructure and provide less tax breaks, we can make rapid progress. It comes down to the political will to allocate our planet's abundant resources in a different and more equitable and sustainable way. But transitions are hard, right? Anyone who has left home to attend school or started a new job or left a challenging relationship to find something better knows this. It's scary. It requires grit and fortitude to power through a period of unease, to find your new place and reach a new equilibrium. And that's just for an individual. So transitioning an entire world to a better way of operating is even harder, right? So many governments with so many different priorities and challenges. And this is where we stand today, in transition between an old way and a new way. And most governments are not leading the way. But that's where we come in. At Singularity University, we're all about providing change makers like you with the mindset, tool set, and network to empower you to build creative solutions that will help see us through this journey that we all have to make. The Global Summit is our most important annual gathering, right? It's where we bring together our extraordinary community. The group that is gathered here today, and it's part of our almost one million strong tribe, are creating new ideas to solve problems and then turning those ideas into reality. For as we see over and over again, it's the ideas that are the easy part and it's the doing that is so hard. And this community of doers has had a pretty amazing year. We've seen some extraordinary things. We've seen 3D printing on the space station, micro satellites by the hundreds being launched. We've seen new ways of living sustainably, and we've seen new breakthroughs in energy production, computing, education, and so much more. The people in this community are truly amazing, and it's why it's such an honor for me to get to be part of it. So what drives this expanding community to come together for three days every year? I believe it's because we share a basic desire to want to create a better world. We know we can't wait for others to lead, that we, this community, have to be the ones to help drive the world forward. I believe you also know that we're at a crossroads, right? The stakes have never been higher. You understand that we have disconnected ourselves from nature and failed to understand that we are inextricably connected and depend on each, other well, each other's wellness to thrive as a whole. I've gotten to know Paul Stamets, the famed mycologist, over the last few years and learned through him about how mycelium helps connect disparate species of plants and trees to share resources and keep everyone thriving. For a healthy ecosystem requires all parts of it to be operating efficiently and effectively. And by helping the most fragile or weakest survive and thrive, the entire ecosystem does better. So everyone must do well if everyone is ultimately going to do great. Right? And that's how we have to look at the world today. We all need to do well in order for all of us as a whole to be doing great. To move to this new way of operating, we have to shift our mindset. And that is one of the key issues that's facing us. Where many are stuck in this old mindset of scarcity and fear, where you must lose so that I can gain more, where I can only gain enough if you don't have enough. You may have seen this quote from Gus Speth that's been circulating and really resonated with me. I wanted to share with you. I used to think the top environmental problems were biodiversity loss, ecosystem collapse, and climate change. The top environmental problems are selfishness, greed, and apathy. And to deal with these, we need a cultural and spiritual transformation. And we scientists don't know how to do that. The good news is that there are many, many people who are realizing now that a mindset is absolutely critical to solving this problem, and they are working hard to help us make that leap. It's people like our own Nicole Bradford, who's looking at how technology allows us to transform our thinking, our performance, and to find peace and grace within ourselves. It's people like Rick Doblin who are working to heal those who have been hurt so that we can break the cycle where hurt people hurt more people. Healing humanity is a critical part of helping us reach a world of abundance. 
We need a massive upgrade to our global operating system, right? Because the world has changed. What is possible has changed dramatically. And for the first time in human history, if we can evolve our ways of thinking and acting, we can realize dramatic improvements and attain a quality of life that's never been feasible before. That's one of the key reasons for our existence here at Singularity University. We're a benefit corporation, as many of you know, with a mission to educate, inspire, and empower leaders to apply exponential technologies to address humanity's grand challenges. We believe that the future is created by the actions that we take as a whole and the impact that we make today, together. Right? Fusing our best intentions with astounding innovations to help us create a future that we can be proud of. So our two founders, Ray Kurzweil and Peter Diamandis, knew over a decade ago that the world was about to go through something extraordinary, right? They realized we were entering this period of unparalleled innovation and disruption that was being driven by accelerating technologi technological change, and that most of the world had no idea that this was coming. So SU was created to play its small part in helping move humanity through this period of transition. Peter Diamandis, who we're going to hear from in just a little bit, is a daring entrepreneur and author and innovator, and he frequently talks about using technology to solve truly massive problems and create massive businesses. He dreams big and reminds us that we're only limited by the scope of our vision and our willingness to take risks. So Ray Kurzweil is the other half of our founding equation. You'll hear from him tomorrow. And he is a brilliant and accomplished innovator, author, and a director of engineering at Google. It was really Ray's insights around the exponential growth of information technology that was the initial impetus behind the founding of SU. So this organization that started as a dream 11 years ago and brings us to, uh, together today is now a community with over or just around a million people in over 159 countries around the world. We've created 62 companies, educated over 200,000 people, and driven over 5,000 impact initiatives. So because of you, because of this community, because of the extraordinary technological changes that are taking place in the world, I truly believe that great things lie ahead for humanity. And it's through the insights and actions of individuals like you that we will create the future that we so desperately need and so desperately deserve. So I want to thank you for being part of the community and thank you for being part of this event today as we kick off Singularity University's Global Summit. Welcome, enjoy, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, now we're going to get into the, into the meat of it. So it's my great pleasure now to get to introduce this next speaker. So uh, Peter Diamandis is a co-founder, uh, executive founder of Singularity University, someone that I admire greatly, and it's his, uh, his vision, his, his willingness to take big, bold risks. Uh, and it really has created this filter for how we at SU look at the world, thinking boldly, thinking about abundance, uh, and trying to take some risks and make some great things happen to, to change the world. So with that, it's my great pleasure to welcome my friend, Dr. Peter Diamandis. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. First of all, uh, let's hear it for Will Weissman. I'm so proud of the work he's doing. <laughs> 10 years as a university, or as singularity, four years here at Global Summit, uh, it's a pleasure for me to give this opening keynote slot every year. And I think about what it is I want to convey uh, during this time. But what is it that I can share with you that's new or a different way of looking at it that's going to be meaningful to yourselves as leaders, as CEOs, as entrepreneurs, as mothers, fathers. And I want to talk this year about a series of meta trends. You know, a lot of the trends that are going on in the world right now are almost unstoppable. Uh, and they're somewhat predictable. And it's perhaps this which has been Ray's superpower of envisioning and making extraordinary uh, predictions of where the world is going. So I want to share with you sort of the meta trends I'm seeing. I've got a book which comes out this January called The Future is Faster Than You Think. Um, I love the, the subtitle, How Converging Technologies Are Transforming Business Industries and Our Lives. And it's the realization that this convergence is what makes 
this different now and here. So cheaper, faster computers, and we're about to see this incredible uh, increase as quantum computing comes online and impacts almost every industry as it impacts machine learning and the materials genome and uh, pharmaceutical discoveries. And I'm not even talking about quantum, but regular classical computation is accelerating sensors, networks, AI, robotics, 3D printing, synthetic biology, AR, VR, a blockchain. As computation gets stronger, so do these. And it used to be that you could be the expert in any one of these, and that was sufficient. But it's no longer the case. It's the convergence of these technologies that is really transforming our world. It's how two, three, or four of these are coming together and creating new business models. And as entrepreneurs, I think that's the most important thing that we should be looking at. What are the new business models? Not just the new technology, right? Being an expert in the problem and not the technology, but the business models are where the juice is. The second thing going on right now, and I can feel this, and hopefully you can as well, is that the rate at which technology is getting faster is itself getting faster. We are accelerating the rate of technological acceleration. And there's a multitude of things that are coming together to make this possible, right? More people are now connected than ever before. They have access to more computational than ever before. And they have the technology they're using is cheaper than ever before. And they're getting access to more intelligent supplementation than ever before. So we're literally accelerating, you know, the first derivative of our acceleration. I hate to call it the jerk, but anyway, for the physicists in the room. Um, it is getting faster and faster. And so I want to call out a few meta trends uh, that are important, and I'll speak about just a few of these. The first, and you saw a part of these slides, I'll show some of them again that Will showed, which is we are seeing increasing global abundance. It's hard for us to realize that as we see the crisis news network and all the negativity in the world, but what people have access to is more abundant than ever before. Uh, we're seeing an acceleration as things demonetize. Things are becoming, products and services becoming cheaper and cheaper and becoming available to more and more people. And this in itself is creating more increased global abundance. Everyone everywhere is being connected at gigabit connection speeds. And this is gonna change every one of our lives. I don't care what business you're in, the fact that every single person on the planet is being connected at gigabit connection speed is going to be transformative. But it's not just people. We're connecting everything on this planet. IoT and IOE, we'll go into this in a little bit. And what this allows is us to ask questions like we'd never asked before. If everything is connected, we're heading towards a world where you can know anything, anytime. Number six a revolution in personalized, autonomous, fast, and cheap transportation of people and things, right? Uh, my dear friend Ramez Nam talks about this beautifully. Increasing human intelligence. And this is about AI and AR support of you to learn what you need to know in exactly the moment you need it, but also this incredible transformation before us on BCI. Increasing human longevity, health span, increasing capital abundance, and increasing global cheap energy. Again, what Ramez talks about so beautifully. So these are 10 of the 20 that I'm tracking. I'd like to dive into a half of these and talk about what they mean to us. So I want to pause here that I don't think any of us truly understand how fast the world is changing. And I think ultimately that's the role that we at Singularity University, you, all of us, play here at SU and in our Abundance Digital and Abundance 360 ecosystem is to help us understand, keep our finger on the pulse of how fast things are changing. You know, a lot of people are fearful about the future. In fact, most people are fearful about the future. Hopefully, as we have these conversations, we get excited about the future, excited about the tools that we have to solve problems. So let's hit on this idea again. I can't help but, but focus on it because you are, as members of the Singularity community, really the representatives to the world to help and, and pause in the conversation to say, hold it, I know that you see all this negativity around you, but let's look at the data. Let's take a second and look at the data where the world is truly is because 
again, the, neg the news media's news cycles are designed to connect our eyes to their advertisers, and we pay 10 times more attention to negative news than positive news, and that's all we get fed. And as a result, all we see is the world in hell in a handbasket. So you saw uh, this, let me summarize, we've tripled the per capita global income over the last 100 years, the lifespan has doubled, the cost of food has dropped 20-fold, energy's dropped 100-fold, transportation thousands of fold, communications millions if not billions of fold cheaper. Take a look at this, this is uh, partly what you saw Will present, which is, you know, increase in global prosperity or a decrease in the number of people living below extreme poverty. But check out this last portion right here, which is the data presented at the start of this year. It's continuing and it's accelerating, right? The world is secretly, quietly becoming more and more abundant. Increasing global literacy, you know, in this point, Will showed it, but again, what was life like when half of your children died before the age of five? What did it feel like to live in that kind of a world where you didn't name your child because it hurt less if they died? The chance of having a mother die in childbirth has become de minimis in much of the world. Global average life expectancy has doubled. We're going to talk about, I'll talk about this and you'll hear during other programs, that we're on the verge of doubling the human life expectancy again, right? The most precious thing we have is our lives and the time and how we use that time. Uh, I was having a conversation at lunch with a family about exponent, at exponential family luncheon about, about increasing global populace and aren't you concerned about that? Bill Gates has two great TED Talks on this subject. But look at this, in the 1950s, about 100 families had six or more children per family. You do two things to a population center. You make them healthier and better educated. The number of children per family plummet. And you can see how rapidly that's decreasing over time. Here's another way to look at it. The child replacement rate for the Earth is 2.1 children per family is what allows break even we're decreasing. In the U.S., we're below the U.S. population replacement level. Globally, we're 2.42. In red, airlines are clearly still the safest means of transportation on the planet. That blue line are automobiles. When we get to autonomous cars, those will drop down to a near zero death rate as well. Global disaster deaths. So what's happening in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s? Why are the number of deaths per hurricane, per flood, per storm, per epidemic, why are they decreasing? It's not that there are less of them, it's that we have access to the data to predict them better, to get help in that golden hour, right? These technologies are supporting this, and this is from Steven Pinker's book called The Better Angels of Our Nature, where he shows us we're living during the most peaceful time ever in human history, which is really hard to fathom but it's true.